Welcome back to the Naked Proverbs podcast, where we unclothe the truth about black love, family, and marriage. My name is Nick Scott, one of your hosts. And as always, I'm here with my husband. What's going on? It's your boy, Rich. And today we're going to talk about luggage. You know, that baggage, that junk in the trunk, that extra stuff you bring in. Why would you call it luggage? Because bags, luggage... You know, Louis Vuitton luggage. They got them boxes. Right at the start of every episode, we always remind our listeners that we are not licensed, trained, or professional therapists or counselors. We are experts because we do have more than 10,000 hours in our marriage. We've been married quite a long time, and we use The Naked Proverbs as our platform to share our advice, our experience, our stories, and of course, our opinions. If you haven't already, make sure that you are following Naked Proverbs on whatever platform you listen to your podcasts on. And if you like what you hear, show us your love and support by giving us a five-star review on iTunes. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you for tuning in. And for all those that chose to tune into our live, we appreciate that. We love seeing you and we look forward to seeing y'all this evening. Yes, tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook page, we go live. We'll be talking about luggage, I guess. Baggage. (laughs) Bag lady. Yes, I, I really like that song. It's a good song. Yeah, I know. See? And thank you to everybody who has given us five-star review on iTunes. Yeah, I appreciate that. When I get in there and I look and I'm like, oh, look at that. Ain't no fours. Y'all, yeah, there's no fours and y'all have some really good things to say. So thank you. We appreciate that. This week, I had the opportunity to speak with my mom, have some conversations with my grandmother because my grandfather's been kind of sick and no, it's not the Rona, y'all. The Rona ain't got him. He's just aging. And so we were having some conversations around, well, does everybody know where his DD-214 is? Do you have power of attorney? Just basic questions that normally you just don't have in everyday conversation with someone. And it made me realize how important it is to have some kind of hard conversations. Some might call them hard. Others may not see it as a hard conversation, but uh, having those real conversations with your loved ones about the paperwork remember we went to go see was it earthquake recently and he kept talking about having your paperwork in order and a lot of times we do have our paperwork in order like in the situation with your grandfather he does have some certain things that are accessible but oftentimes we don't have our paperwork in order if you do have your paperwork in order, it's important for the people who are going to be handling your affairs to know where your paperwork is, where your will is, what does your living will say? Where, what about your trust? What about, you called it a DD-214? I don't know if everybody knows what that is, but most people, if they're in the military and they're honorably and dishonorably? It doesn't matter. If you were in the military from 1950 forward, you have a DD-214. And it's important that your family knows where it is because it directly relates to what types of benefits they will be able to receive as well as what you will be able to receive if you want a military burial or, uh, you know, I think it's Social Security or it might be the VA. They give a one time lump sum payment to a vet's family after they've passed. So it's just little things that you may not even know are available to your family. And if you're not sharing those conversations or having those conversations, they could miss out on opportunities that will secure their future. Having those conversations while you are healthy and able to have those conversations. My experience is with my mom who passed away seven years ago, coming up in the fall now. And I spent time with her leading up to her passing and I wanted to get all of these things in order. I wanted to get her will in order, make sure that she had 
power of attorney given to the proper person that she wanted to give it to. And I was trying to have these conversations with her in April, the spring. Black folks, we don't like talking about death no. because it's almost like if we talk about it, I'm then gonna it's going to happen. Oh, Lord. Well, let's be clear. My mother was already sick and the prognosis was not good for her. So she did have a timeline and the timeline ended up being a lot shorter than any of us wanted it to be. But when the time came for us to have those conversations about a living will and a will and power of attorney and things like that, it was too late because she literally could not speak. She mm -hmm. literally could not speak by the time that my mother passed. So in the spring, when I was having the, trying to have these conversations with her and she got mad and tight lipped and didn't want to talk, I don't need to talk about that. But then fast forward to the fall, and when we needed to have those conversations, we couldn't even get her to sign a document right. that and needed I think to be signed. That, that's a big part of it is sometimes we talk about the conversation part, but there are legal documents that need to be signed, whether it's giving somebody power of attorney or you are filing for a certain benefit or whatever that is. And unfortunately, if those signatures aren't there, then you end up putting your family in a situation where everything you've worked so hard for falls into probate or it ends up getting tied up in the courts or whatever the situation is. And it doesn't have to be that way because it really is as simple as just doing it. Like let's sit down and that's, you know, and honestly, that's what happened for me this week was I kind of called out my mom and my dad because we were on that con you know, that phone call having this conversation about my grandfather. And I was like, look, we probably need to get my brother and my sister on the phone and we need to have this conversation as a family as well. Not because you're old and sickly, but because, well, you know what? People die every day and we shouldn't have to wait till someone is old and sickly to start asking them questions that we should have already known. It's business. It's a part of life and it's a very important part of life. Death happens. We're all going to die. And I know every time I talk about dying with my family and I talk about it a lot, not because I'm obsessed or want to die or anything like that, but I want them to understand what I want my wishes to be. I'm and, not listening. And they don't listen to me. Like my, my husband tunes me out. The only, the only person in the house that probably does listen to me is our youngest daughter. And you she know, ain't got no power, she or no money. Okay, <laughs> she, she's third in line. <laughs> she's third. She's so far down the list. She better hope we both go at the same time so she can have some power. Because otherwise, it'd be like sit down somewhere, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the only one that actually. Ripped. My oldest, she's like, why are you always talking about that? We don't want to. Talk. I'm like, we need to have these conversations. And fortunately for us as parents, right now, let's be clear, Rich. We ain't always had our paperwork in order. No, but you know what? I've done better. We're doing better and we're learning. Yeah. And we want our girls to understand what needs to happen should, no, not should, when we die. And we're fortunate now that we do have an 18 year old child because before we used to have conversations about, well, if we die, who's taking care of the kids? Where the kids gonna, like, all these little things need to be taken care of because discussed. Yes. Because, you know, you might be sitting there, husband thinking they going to my mama and my daddy. Yeah. Wife might be sitting there thinking they going to my sister or my mom and my daddy. Like you need to have those conversations and be real and honest about, well, why do you think this is the direction they should go? Or, well, do they even want our kids because you need to have that conversation with them too. Don't just assume, I'm going to tell you now, don't nobody in my family assume your kids are coming to me. Don't do it. Don't do it Please. because your kids are going to be homeless when you dead. <laughs> I'm just being oh, real. Uh, whatever. Now, nah, I love y'all nieces Wait and nephews. Wait a minute. I you love can't. <laughs> I would have all y'all's back and y'all know it. These would not be home. <laughs> they would not be homeless. But but you should still, don't but just check assume. With, check with us like, though. I mean, you know. Because I, at one point we was planning to move out the country. So, you know, if you die in another 10 years and I'm not even in the country and your kids, well, well, now nah, my brother's kids and my little sister's kids to be young enough to live with us. <laughs> Don't think you coming to live with me if you ain't talk to me and nieces and nephews. I love y'all. You know, y'all has got a place with your uncle Riri always. And, you know, we just covered both ends of the spectrum, right? We covered those of us who do have older parents or parents mm -hmm. that are sick. And then we've also talked 
to the young folks with the young kids everybody needs to have their paperwork in order yes. this ain't a, just the old thing no this just ain't a rich thing this is a make sure that you're protected your assets are protected when my mother passed she had a house a beautiful home that would have been a great investment property to keep in the family what happened to the house well that's a whole nother story for another episode exactly i said we were gonna talk about luggage and you quickly looked at me like luggage the truth is it's called baggage but i feel like some people don't just have a bag like i think of bags baggages you know that trash bag right that black glad trash bag that's full of stuff some people go into relationships with legit luggage i'm talking they got the five piece roller luggage and they come into their marriage with it sometimes it's more than just five pieces sometimes they got the foot locker they got the doggone the duffel, duffel bag, bag. <laughs> girl when we were a uh, guest on the audacity podcast it was one of the questions that came up was, you know, well, how did y'all deal with baggage that you brought from previous relationships? And like I said on the podcast, I was like, you know, I didn't come up with no luggage, no baggage, no issues is what I initially thought. But then I stopped and I really thought about that question. And I realized that I don't think it's possible for anyone to come into any relationship without some type of baggage. Everybody has baggage. Everybody has those things that either get on your nerves or that you're not going to put up with. And the fact of the matter is, is that baggage comes from more than just intimate relationships. When we talk about baggage, a lot of people automatically start to think about what did this past boyfriend or my ex-husband or this past intimate relationship partner, what did they do to me that I'm carrying into this new relationship? But it's not always those intimate relationships. When I stopped and thought about it on a deeper level and not just the surface level of I'm perfect, what I had to realize was that I did come into our relationship with, of course, previous relationship issues, but I also came into our relationship with issues from my parents issues from my siblings. I had trust issues. I had communication issues. I had avoidance issues. I have insecurities. I had all these things that would be labeled as baggage that I brought into our relationship, which ultimately turned into our marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go so far as to say, and take it for what you want to take it as, is that the way that you were raised in your childhood probably creates more baggage than any intimate relationship that you ever enter. Because I would, again, be so bold to say that the way that you were raised in your childhood sets the foundation for expectations, mm -hmm. for the way that you feel when you're in a relationship, for how you react when certain things happen to you when you're in a relationship. We can gloss over the childhood stage of our lives and especially the older we get because it's like oh you know i've been grown for longer than i was a child at least in my mind but reality is those are those foundational years those are those building blocks building that foundation like you said and what did the bible say if you build it on sandy ground you know gonna wash away you know and i think that a lot of people don't realize that their foundation has been built on just unstable facts and realities for them and it creates this house that's just waiting to tip over at some point so you have to address it we underestimate and minimize the amount of impact that our childhood rearing has on our entire lives we believe as for whatever reason, I don't know why we believe this, but we believe once we become an adult, 18. all that shit that happened when we were kids doesn't matter or affect us anymore. And it does. Mommy and daddy issues are real. Birth mm -hmm. order issues are are real. These things are so real that, like I said before, when you leave the house and become an adult, that shit carries with you into your first intimate relationships. So then guess what? That person's not perfect. That person came with their own baggage. So now you have even more baggage that you're carrying from childhood, your first relationship, your second relationship, 
into your marriage. A big piece of all of this is you have to recognize and identify and admit, acknowledge that you have issues. Like nobody is perfect and that's okay. But when we just avoid and we go from one relationship into our next relationship until we ultimately end up with that person that we say I do to, right? But we never actually address those baggage issues that we just been dragging behind us, that luggage we just been packing and unpacking and packing and unpacking. If you don't actually deal with it and address it, it doesn't just go away magically. Like it doesn't matter how much money you make, how much education you have, how great of a spouse you marry. At the end of the day, we all have issues. And if you aren't going to address them, it just doesn't disappear. And you will never prosper and flourish to your maximum capacity if you're holding on to baggage. You won't. You could, you could be a multi-billionaire right now. But if you have baggage, imagine how much more you could have if that's your metric for success, right? Because everybody's right. metric for success and, and happiness is not around finances. But whatever it is, whatever your metric for success is, Imagine how much happier and successful you could be if you did not have that baggage. And it starts with you. Yes. It starts with you. It's easy. I say it all the time for me to focus on Rich and everything that's wrong about him. Huh? Because I'm perfect. She's perfect. She who? She, Nick Scott. Shit. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, whatever she's perfect mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to you know call out all his flaws and all the things that are wrong with him but the truth of the matter is and i'll say it all the time i'm gonna keep saying it y'all it starts with you like this marriage is about being the best version of me that i can be I can only control me. I can't control him. I can't control the baggage that he has. I can help him identify some of it. He might get offended about it. It's all about the delivery, y'all. Oh, goodness. It is. I mean, because it's easy to, to be like, you act just like your mama. Oh, well, I've never said that. No, you haven't. But I'm just giving examples. And you've never said that to me either. No, because I thought your mom was the bomb. <laughs> you got me <laughs> off topic. I think that it's easy to say things at the wrong moment mm -hmm. or in the wrong tone. And instead of it being a opportunity for growth, it becomes an argument or it becomes this defensive battle. And so to me, it's like, it's okay to identify my shortcomings or those patterns that I may have in my life that maybe because I don't even notice that they're patterns, but it's how you deliver it. It is, it's how you deliver it. And that's part of having a partnership. We're on the same team. I'm not going to say anything to my husband that's going to hurt him or detriment him because ultimately I'm hurting myself. What's that Beyonce song? When you lie to me, you lie to yourself. When you hurt me, you're hurting yourself. I have never heard that song. So oh I don't man. Know. It's on the Lemonade album, I think. It's one of the good better hey, songs. Hello. That's my favorite no, song. No, it's not Halo. That's, that's my old. Favorite song. That's old B. That's a good song. We talking about that new shit that she dropped up in the club. What's the one she do with Usher? That is why are you keep bringing up them? Oh, I'm talking. Oh, I can't even think of the song. That's some good ones. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I that, don't even listen to B. So be mad at me. I don't either, really. But I did <laughs> listen to that Lemonade album. I don't know if she has why a new one. Why are you one. poking me in my eye? Oh, sorry. But when I do him harm, I'm harming myself. And when you're in a marriage, you have to start to think about it like that when we're talking about how to address each other's baggage. Because let's be clear, most people are not mature enough. I don't care how old you are, or how long you've been married. You're not mature enough to hold yourself accountable. And that's why you need your partner to be able to address some of these things out of love. Mm -hmm. And just because it's out of love doesn't mean it's indirect or it's sugarcoated. That's a great segue into how do you even deal with baggage, right? And I mean, you start off by basically saying, look, we've got to identify it. It's important to realize that you have to recognize and acknowledge that you have baggage because so many people do walk around like I'm the perfect one in this marriage mm -hmm. or I'm the one with no issues. My family's perfect. I'm perfect any issues we have in our marriage or you. That type of attitude, you will never start to unpack that baggage because you are just really just pushing it deeper down. And for some people, it's because they really don't want to deal with it. 
They don't want to address it. They don't want to talk about it. They have learned to avoid conflict at all cost. And that's baggage, though. So to me, you have to start off by acknowledging that there is baggage in every single one of us. All of us are pulling some luggage behind us. Mm -hmm. And then, like I mentioned earlier, you have to pay attention to patterns. Because if you have patterns in your life, if you have patterns of the way you react to things, then that may be related to some baggage that you're carrying. The best way that I can sum up baggage, I'm going to refer to another song. Oh, yeah. Erica Badu, I'm not going to sing. I mean, you know, I will sing now. Sing. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. I'll sing it. Sing it. I'm going to sing, sing, I'm sing, gonna sing it. it. Sing it to him, baby. Y'all know what song I'm talking about. Oh, Lord. It's Bag Lady, right? <clears throat> bag lady, you gon' hurt your back. Don't give him no more. Don't give him no more. That was good. That ready. was good. That was good. They ain't ready. Oh, Jesus. But the <laughs> the lyrics of that song, y'all, when I say if you want it simple, digestible, bite-sized, read the lyrics to that song because not only does she talk about the detriments of having bag, and she's talking to a woman, but this can be for men too. She's also talking about how freeing it is when you let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Yes, yes. In whatever key you would like to let it go in, <laughs> feel free to let it go. And speaking of keys, communication is key, y'all. Because, I mean, Nick just kept hitting that, that nail with that hammer when she was just like, you know, as my spouse, she has to talk to me about those things. And I have to talk to her about those things. And because if you're not having a conversation about it, if you're not trying to work through it and you're just like, oh, well, it is how he is. Oh, well, it is how she is. Then are you really having your best marriage? Are you really living to your fullest when you just accept crap? Like why just accept it just because that was good. I don't know. I'll be saying some good stuff sometimes. Sometimes for real, y'all, I listen to uh, episodes and I'm like, I said that. Have you ever done that? Mm hmm. Like, we'll just be like, dang, that was deep. Well, or, that was tight. Well, I'm currently transcribing all of our past episodes. Oh, and that's for all the blind people. N no. If you're blind, you can still hear. Oh, that's for all the deaf people. Well, yes, it's it's partly to make our podcast more accessible so a wider audience can. Wider? No, not whiter. Wider oh, audience. I said wider. I was like, I thought we was black love. <laughs> not saying that other people can't listen but and I they mean, do well i appreciate we're it we're here Thank for you. everybody well no not really but i mean well honestly though we are here for marriage we're here if yeah if you are married and you want your marriage to be better you should be here yeah i don't care what race you, you are. can take some nuggets yeah. and we have a lot that's what i was trying to say okay is that we have a lot of good stuff man we have some good stuff out there so we want to make sure we're communicating want to make sure we're staying positive because remember when you start really getting deep into that luggage it might be some stuff in it that stank because it's been in there so long so you need to be positive got some dead bodies in there boy you might you might have some dead bodies who knows you might have some skeletons in there that you need to solve you want to stay professional and you know just really loving and kind and sympathetic for did your you say spouse. professional yeah that's like sexual isn't it professional yes what does that mean I meant like, you know, when you are a professional. But why would you be professional in your marriage? Well, because I would say this. There are times in our lives where we might snap on people that we love for saying the same thing or doing the same thing that if it happened in our work environment, in a professional environment, we okay. wouldn't act that way. We would just receive it or listen to it or deal. You know, we might be angry inside, but ain't nobody going to see it. Yeah. Who going to check me? Boom. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm saying when I say be professional is like, don't be so quick to just dismiss it or to react in a negative way mm -hmm. with your spouse just because it's your spouse. Act yeah. like that was your boss that said that right. person writing that check. Yeah, because usually she is the boss. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Finally, if you just can't figure out how to solve it, go get some help. I mean, it does not hurt to get some individual counseling as well as some professional counseling. Like, you know, what I mean, what I say, individual counseling and as well as marriage. Couples counseling. Couples counseling. Yeah. yeah, get some of that. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Naked Proverbs. We want you to truly have a happy marriage. We want you to continue to thrive in your marriages. 
let go of that baggage and indulge in your spouses on a regular basis. Don't forget to follow The Naked Proverbs on whatever podcasting platform you listen to your podcasts on. And we will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.